Hey guys, this is Redneck West from the Nerdy Old Men Podcast, and today we're going to the movies. And with me, as always, is my co-host Chad. Chad, uh, I think we got a good one today because this is this is the first movie we've done, and I'm I'm excited about it. Yes, sir. You know, I know that you're an outdoorsman. You like to go out in the woods and go on some I hikes and stuff like that. Yes. I know, I know you do. And you know, me spending most of my life in scouting and being an Eagle Scout, I've done a whole <laughs> lot of hikes, but I have never ever done a hike like this movie the hike and we've got with us today mr vinnie vineyard to talk to us about his film the hike vinnie how are you today buddy what's up feathers well tell us about vinnie oh well i'm probably better known to a lot of people as funk master v i was a pro wrestler up in your neck of the woods for in fact that's how i met perfect pat who kind of got me to uh, uh the first night i was in wrestling he uh he was doing some sort of some sort of program where he was kind of like the mouthy um, audience member who was yelling at the at a wrestler, and there was supposed to be some sort of program between uh, this audience member and wrestler. I don't know if that ever materialized, but he was there the first night I got into pro wrestling, which was was down here in East Tennessee, and uh, so I met Perfect Pat, and, and weirdly enough, because um, I heard you guys uh, broadcast, he mentioned. Uh, he said he mentioned the movie to hike to you guys. You guys are like, oh yeah, that sounds really cool because it's a movie based uh, here in East Tennessee. And, and uh, but oddly enough, our next movie we're going to have Perfect Pat in the movie because uh, we need somebody that looks like a wet thumb. <laughs> but, um, that would be awesome. He yeah. has also passed as Sasquatch before. That's a story <laughs> for another time. Well, I know he's a, he's friends of yours, but he's he's always that guy is always. Like he's been, I do a paranormal television show for a, a network called Aside TV. The show is called Wrestling with Ghosts. I'm there with my tag team partner, who is Sasquatch. He's a seven foot long haired giant. Wow. Um, he's in the movie, and then uh, Travis Graves is on the show, and he, he does a wrestler called El Gordo Gringo, uh, which is uh, you know Hispanic for the fat white American guy. But anyway. Um, <laughs> We do, uh, and of course, Travis has lost weight, so he's going to have to change his name soon. I don't know what That's right, yeah. Him, but, but, uh, so, uh, but a couple of the episodes that I did with um, with Perfect Pat up in La Follette, Tennessee, have been some of our most popular episodes of our ghost show that we've done. Um, the old La Follette, uh post office up there uh, is, is one of the most haunted buildings we've ever been in. Done, I was about to say, my, my dad worked at the post office. So, dude, if you you can watch it on YouTube, we actually have it up for free, and it's not the greatest quality of episode because it was it was actually a broadcast. We were there doing something I don't know. It was like some sort of charity thing where we people came in and paid money and we like helped uh, handicapped dogs cross the street or something. I can't remember what the the, <laughs> the charity was, but. And actually, we made it into a, a, a full-blown broadcast, you know, we were recording on our cell phones because so much paranormal activity. Uh, the guy that I was talking about, Big Luke, ex-cop, pro wrestler, tough man fighter, that kind of guy, he, he actually ran out of the building screaming because, and we got it recorded at least four times, uh, the, something out of the darkness kept saying, hey, Luke, hey, that's, Luke. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And after about the fourth time, he was like, "F this, out of He's not going to lose it. Yeah, dude, that's that's cool. We'll have to put the uh, the link to that in, oh, yeah. in our show description. Put it on a YouTube video too, because that would be we, cool. And then we did an episode up there at Mary Death Antiques. Uh, yeah. Another uh, another interesting place. Yes, it is. It's a big. For people who don't know, it's a gigantic. I guess it's closed now, but it, it was a toy store, but kind of junk shop, and it was kind of run down. And just, I ran across a little girl where the Ouija boards were, and she attached herself to me and my partner, Luke, um, and she kind of, she's still around with us. In fact, she's told people who are psychics and stuff, we were, we were, um, we weren't agnostic to the paranormal, but we definitely weren't the believers that we are now. But people who are kind of like, you know, there's still people in the business that were kind of like, ah, these guys are a little wacky. But like the people that are like the the clairvoyance and uh, the, the mediums and sensitives and stuff, um, 
back then we were kind of like these guys are nuts. Uh, I mean, we're more accepting of them now because we've seen proof of some of the stuff. But anyway, they we've had people walk up to me and look going, "There's a little girl that's attached herself. She was in a she said she was in a toy store far away, but she has two nice daddies now." And and we we're like, "Oh my God, her name's Megan." And we went up to Toledo. No, I'm sorry, Cincinnati to do an investigation, and we ran into her up there. We were doing roll call in an abandoned school, and uh, we were like. Uh, Luke was like, point, if we point at you, say, I'm here and tell us your name. And he's sitting there pointing at different, you know, empty spots like a goofball. <laughs> uh, uh, and then eventually he pointed at one spot and this little voice goes, Megan. And that's what the name was wow. of the of the little girl. We got, I've got so much of that job I can talk about. I'm blowing through it. But yeah, that's so, awesome. <laughs> no, that's really cool, man. That's a creepy story, but I love it. We yeah, may have so, to have you back on for another for another episode to talk about stuff. Yeah, like yeah. I was I was a bass player, played twelve hundred shows for an all white hip hop and funk band, uh, stand up comedian, uh, actor, uh, radio uh, DJ. Now you know paranormal television, pro wrestler, and now uh, starting to make our own movies. And uh, that's what I guess why I'm here today. But that's. Uh, Probably one of the things I'm most excited about because it is absolutely the hardest thing we've ever done, or I've ever done. It's got to be challenging. I mean, it, I watched the, I watched the film this morning. I think Wes watched it last night. Oh wow! It, that that is very that that seems very challenging to um, to to rein all of that stuff in, and you got your ideas plus all of the actual logistics of it, and be able to get it all together and come out uh, as something substantial is is got to be a challenge. Well, the Uberus that we had is like, let's just do an effing movie. Right. <laughs> and then you realize when you watch a movie, they don't, you know, when you watch them streaming now, they, they shrink the screen. You don't pay attention. You're like, you still awake? You want to screw? Do you want to watch the next thing? You don't look, but on the <laughs> credits, there's 8 million people that do all this stuff. So now we've whittled this down to four people and volunteers. Um, wow. You know, it's it was massive because this the movie The Hike, whether you like it or you hate it, it is a legitimate movie. Yep. Um, it's not forty minutes; it's an hour and a half. It was over two hours, and we had to edit it down. And there's a lot of good stuff that's on the, the floor, you know, the the, the the editing room floor. But um, you know, we had to figure out how to uh, how to do a movie while we made the movie and that was that was kind of challenging we had to go back and redo stuff because we made mistakes and um but yeah it it was you know a thousand jobs between nine people or 15 people for some of the people you know we some of the actors held the camera sometimes or held the big reflective thing that's supposed to take off the, or it's supposed to light up the faces when you're outside you know people did many jobs Right. Now, uh, give us, so we are talking about The Hike, uh, your new movie. Give us a little bit, we don't want any spoilers, obviously, but give us a little bit of a, kind of a, a preview of, uh, of what you got. Now, we did, we, in one of our, on our Halloween episode, when we had Perfect Pat Peebley on, and he talked about it, if people go to the YouTube video of that uh, episode, uh, when we get to that part where he mentions it, uh, we do have a little card that pops up to where you can uh, watch the trailer uh, for Vinny's movie, so please go ahead and do that. But uh, Vinny, yeah. g- give us a little uh, little idea about what the hike is. Well, it was based on my brother is the best storyteller I've ever heard. My brother is is country, and I'm not. I'm the, the character that you see in the movie that I portray is pretty much about ninety percent who I really am. Um, <laughs> Good. I, I don't like being out in the woods. I, I just, I, I've never felt comfortable. You know, people don't like being downtown Baltimore. I feel fine. I'm like, where's the crab cakes? Right. <laughs> you know, and, uh, but, you know, people, I feel the way a lot of people do when they're in a bad neighborhood, you know, when I'm out in the woods. I'm like, there could be any sort of scorpion crawl up your anus or a guy could come out here and kill you. So my brother took me fishing. I don't normally go fishing, but my brother's outdoors. And he told me this story, a couple, actually a myriad of stories uh, while we were fishing one night uh, for catfish of him being out in the woods the first time ever. He was a novice hiker. He was a BMX biker. He has his dork out. His dork friend went with him. They run a hike on the Appalachian Trail. You know, they're wearing vans or something. You know, they got giant packs of uh huge pots, soup cans. They don't know what they're doing. You know, they, they self-admittedly were like, we had no idea. Well, the first time I ever went hiking down the, the, 
trails and stuff, they started finding these Polaroid pictures of naked people that were bound up and their faces were marked out. And yeah, where's the end of the trail? I'm going back the other way, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they were like, at first, it's kind of like my character in the movie. I was like, this has got to be a joke. This is like an art house project or whatever. But as they kept going, there was more and more and men and women. And the figure, this, the spaces were burnt out with cigarette butts. That's a little unnerving. Yeah. And then when they got to one of the shelters up there, they actually ran into a couple of galoots that kind of looked like the guys that were in our movie uh, just out of nowhere. And they just started saying weird stuff. They were, they were, it was almost like a movie. They were kind of like, to my brother, they were like saying all this, uh, you know, cryptic type stuff, all the you know, double meaning, double entendre type things. And, and they were like, and then, so my friend, or excuse me, my brother and his friend, in the middle of the night, said, we're getting the hell out of here. And they took off, and those guys chased them all the way out of the woods. Really? So uh, that actually yeah. happened. That part actually yeah. happened. That, yeah, that, that, that makes mo- it scarier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That mo- the movie that you guys just watched, I would say almost 60 to 70% of what you see happened. Um, all of the flashback stories were real stories. Um, the scene with the Coors Light, the scene with the effigy, the scene where... During the tents, uh, where there's the voice in the night shaking the uh, the tent, uh, all that stuff happens. Uh, and then we combine my brother's stories, and there's a couple other stories uh, that that he told me that's that's in that movie. But we combine that with this legend of the Cherokee uh, bad guy Spearfinger, um, and that we actually had some dealings with Spearfinger on the show Wrestling with Ghosts um, season uh, season three episode one we go to Bryson City North Carolina to go look for Spearfinger now we didn't expect to get any sort of evidence whatsoever of anything but the craziest part of all that was is that we actually looking for Spearfinger we ran across several legends of what uh, or several rumors or several uh, attributes of this particular spirit uh, as we were going down Nolan Creek Trail. Nolan Creek Trail, lo and behold, is another place where my brother ran into uh, a lot of paranormal activity uh, that we did not know about until I told him, hey, you know, you ever been to Bryson City, the road to nowhere, that tunnel to nowhere? He's like, yeah, you, that's where all those ghost stories I was telling you about the woods happen. Wow. And Nolan wow, that's Creek cool. Trail, yeah, we did not know that. And Nolan Creek Trail is a uh, is regarded as the most haunted trail in, in, in uh, North Carolina. I don't know how they determine that, if there's an AP poll or a coach's poll <laughs> uh, or something. Uh, the BCS. It's, an algor- it's an algorithm. Well, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're number one in one and you're number two in the other. It's, you know, it's just <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we... we we were like, so this legend of Spearfinger, just to simplify it, we go out there and we start talking to these Cherokee folks about, hey, can you tell us about Spearfinger? And they were all real sheepish. Uh, they were aloof. And they didn't like really? the fact that a guy named Funkmaster V in star sunglasses and a mink coat is asking them, hey, what's this crazy thing about Spearfinger? <laughs> so you were actually talking to the locals and, yeah, and, and for the episode, building yeah. this story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's it, cool. It was for the episode of our Wrestling with Ghosts, the paranormal show. And then we were like, when we wanted to make this movie, we correlated, this because it happened in the same spot, what if this legend was happening where my brother was dorking around up in the woods? Uh-huh. And and so, just to give everybody that's listening, because Spearfinger's not really known uh, as, a, as a boogeyman. And the Cherokee, it's part of their religion. And well, the more research I did, the, the more I was like, you know, we got to be kind of treading. This is almost like if we were making fun of. We're not making fun. I want everybody to know we're not making fun. Of, we were just using this person. But it almost be like if we were using like John the Baptist, right? Loosely, you know, and we'd be right. like, hey, wait a minute, you know, that guy's kind of important to us. And that's what I found out is that a lot of the legends about Spearfinger actually were used to explain. It's like mythology. It was used to explain oh, yeah. this happening and that happening. But she's kind of an asshole. I'm sorry, I don't know if I can cuss, but she's an a hole, and she uh, she's <laughs> we don't care. This, she's married to this guy named Stone Man, and they had a falling out. And uh, Spearfinger has an obsidian, really long finger, and she will go up to people, 
stab them where their liver is, take the liver out, and they would die several days later. And then she, over time, started to develop these skills where she would imitate loved ones. She could look like people that you knew and lure you off the trail. Uh, she would throw rocks at people. She would knock uh, trees down on people. She would get, get people caught up in mudslides. And so she's kind of like this, she's like Aquaman, but of the forest. You know, she could use animals. Um, and uh, she, her best friend was a raven, and she would sing that song. If you guys remember, there's kind of this chant that would happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a song talking about how much she loves eating liver. That's what those words are in oh, wow. Yeah, so, uh, it's, wow. cre- it's creepier now that I know what it means, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow. so, um, so yeah, I mean, so we took all of that, we wrapped it up into a script, it was supposed to be serious, but we do, like at Big and Funky Productions, which makes a couple of paranormal shows, and we do a lot of comedy, and just the comedy just started, we could not not be funny, if that makes sense. I mean, everything we were doing was comedic. I'm just, when I'm on camera, I'm just what I am. I can't be serious. I, I just, can relate to that. Yes. Yeah, I, I just, <laughs> I've had reviews come back where people are like, the lead is a great actor, like talking about me giving me props, and it's like, it's not true. That's who I am. I'm just right. this a hole. I can't. If I was supposed to be a gay uh, HVAC tech whose mom died, I'd still be sitting there going, "Hey, you're looking at my nuts. What are you doing? Hey, get out of here. <laughs> I, I just couldn't. I'm not a good actor. I just portray this one particular character, Funkmaster V. And that's I you do really well. The, yeah, you know I, I, that's what. And that's the other thing is that we knew that we had to make this movie fast. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of money. Uh, it actually ended up being a lot more expensive than we thought, but um, so we were filming on the fly, and uh, so the reason I was cast as the lead, there's actually one of the guys, Travis, is the guy with the bow and arrow, is probably the best actor of the group. Uh, he, the reason I was cast though, is because it was known that I didn't need a script. I could just kind of push these scenes. <laughs> And just roll with it yeah so you were basically watching anytime i was interacting i feel bad for candy candy's an actual actress and uh she just basically it was like just follow my lead honey and so she, i mean <laughs> half the time so much b-roll of her laughing and going what you know, and, yeah and well, i was said, wondering about that like when y'all were walking in the the tunnel the first time and there's all the uh, <laughs> uh images painted on the wall and you uh <laughs> I was, I was like, he's got to be just doing that just to mess with her. Just, and it was just like it worked, and you're like, I ah, leave it in. I like it. Well, we actually, we've been up there. We shot that episode, and it's a tunnel to nowhere. That's actually a road that has nothing on it for at least 10 miles, and it just stops at the trail. Uh, they were putting in a, a road to get, I think, from Townsend, uh, to connect Townsend to Bryson City. And they just gave up. The hippies won. They were like, there's no need for this road because I think the interstate system was going through and they just stopped construction. So there's tons of tasteful art in that tunnel of uh, <laughs> phallic nature. That actually, you know, it, it builds the character, though. I mean, when I saw that, I was laughing. I'm like, this guy's a goofball. This is going to be yeah. fun. You know? Well, that's, you know, it, it is a low budget movie, but there's a lot of thought that went into it. Like I'm wearing yeah. an Atari, I'm wearing an Atari shirt. I noticed. I that. loved that. that I, I actually that have that. Works. I have that in my notes right here. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing an Atari shirt to, to signify this guy is an old nerd. Yeah. Um, and then so there's kind of this. So he's instead of going out fishing when he was a kid, he was probably at home in front of the TV playing Atari and Nintendo. And that, I wanted people to kind of get that. Like, this guy yeah. is not, you know, uh, Crocodile Dundee or Steve Irwin or something. This is a guy who's out of his element. So that was all careful. And, yeah, you know, you, you, you I think a lot of the problems with horror movies is that people or creators make these characters are so unlikable, you're pulling for the bad guy. Right. Uh, right. And, and we wanted to make we wanted to make, for an hour and a half of this movie, we wanted you to care about what was going to happen to, to Robin and Vinny and uh, and hope that they made it out alive. You know? So what what is neat about this, and to tell everybody, is you know it's just this guy and his girlfriend, and she's convinced this guy, who's obviously not a, a mountaineer kind of guy, to go out in the woods where her granddad had 
had taken her around as a kid, right? So right. this guy is just a fish out of water. And, and he's like, I got to impress this girl. She's great. So I'm going to have to deal with this. I mean, and everything from the shoes. And we don't want to get into too many details, but I'm like, that, that's just a great thing. I'm, lo- I'm looking at the guy's shoes. I'm like, he's clearly not ready for this. <laughs> right. I'm wearing, I'm wearing Converse All-Stars, and she buys me uh, some hiking boots because I just think, oh, I just walk out there. You know, it doesn't matter. And, uh, again, there's a, if you notice, I'm constantly falling in the movie. Right. Well, uh, I, I, because, I thought that was funny in the uh, the joke at the end of the movie with the count how many times you fall. Yeah. <laughs> I think you all made a drinking game out of that, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. It, either either I touch my face or I'm falling, and they're like, "There's even a, you know, at the end, there's a there's like a fight scene, and the shoes. I trip over the shoes when I'm fighting this just horribly gigantic human being." Uh, Who's a, who's a, who's a, you know? So I mean, there's even it comes into play several times. The interesting thing I don't know if you guys would care about this kind of stuff is that we filmed this is our first movie. We had no idea if we were filming a 45 minute movie or if this thing was going to be three hours. It's hard to gauge. Right. And we had a whole storyline where Robin and Vinny were on the verge of breaking up, and we were going to uh, the reason that he was in the woods was to kind of be like, look, I'm doing this crazy thing for you. Let's, oh, okay. let's, you know, let's keep it together. I care about you. I don't want to break up. And Vinny was constantly, uh, like nervous over this, uh, her ex and, uh, the shoes, the size of the shoes was later to be found out that they, cause they're not the right size. She buys them hiking boots that aren't the right size. And they were they were ex boyfriends size. Ah, okay. So, so there was a lot to that, and but when we started watching it, we were like, "This looks like a really good couple." Like, you know, they're not the same uh, type of person, but she cares about him. He obviously cares about her. Uh, she proves herself, especially at the end, that she cares about him. Yep. Um, and so, you know, we were like, "We don't need that." Uh, the sappy, you know. Well, I, I thought a, that it came through that you know he's like I really don't want to do this you know because yeah. you there's a line where you say well you can take me back home you know but I'm doing <laughs> yeah. this for you <laughs> and it's like okay you know the visual cues like the Atari shirt and the shoes it's like I'm like he has no clue what he's in for that's right you know, he's going to spend three or four days in the woods and and uh, he's not ready for this and she's yeah. all all right let's let's go let's go you're, you're right and, I'm doing and, this for you babe. You know, you're talking about the woods. That was something that I liked a lot was the scenery uh, and yeah. the way that you guys did the cinematography, the way that you showed it in your locations. I mean, th- this is th- this is the area I grew up in. You know, I'm from East Tennessee in this area, and it's beautiful. And it the in the way that you took in, in the drone shots and things like that and, and the beauty of this, of this, uh, this natural um, uh, wonderland, really. But then you see the beauty, and then all of a sudden it's – this evil that could be lurking somewhere in it. So that's just creepy as hell. And, and, and I thought that that was a great marriage of those two things. Well, the first thing that we thank you for that, the first thing we even said is we wanted, we want a movie to be claustrophobic. Uh, okay. And a, yeah. couple, and a couple of the reviews said that it, it seemed, cause we, we, all those drone shots, you, you can't see anything but trees. It's yeah. just like, golly, where, how are they navigating through this mess? And so we kind of just wanted to be like, once the danger, because the another reason I like this movie, I know I made the movie, so I like the movie. But one reason I like about it is I hate movies where there's a trope, movie trope called Monster in the House. And this falls mm-hmm. under that, even though they're outside. It's white people, for some reason, when you find out there's a freaking monster in the house, why don't you leave the house? It, yeah. it just, it just <laughs> get out. It, you pe- it's you know. like, why, why don't you run in a straight line? Why does everybody run around in circles? And, and it's just a straight line, keep them behind you. Get in the car and go. Yeah. You know? And we'll, we'll figure it out at Waffle House. What yeah, you there you go. Yeah. You know? But get out. And so, but the thing about this is it's still the trope, but once they found out they're in trouble, they can't get out. They it's gotta, like, where do you go? Yeah, it's it, exactly. So it's, it's a girl... Who she's a badass in the movie, but still, you know, uh, she gets frazzle fried at one point, and you got a guy who's who'd rather be in a street fight uh, at a pool hall than uh, than 
you know, his his weapon that he brought with him is brass knuckles, which is the stupidest thing <laughs> that you bring as a weapon. But it's totally <laughs> badass, though. I mean, yeah, it's like you're gonna, you're gonna punch a bear in the face. So yeah, we we uh, so you know, there's there's things like that. So that they, you know, and you, you also want to build sympathy, and and you, when you're trying to make these movies, you're trying to build things like okay, they're they're outgunned and outmanned. Well, so, and I think that's why you kind of like the character. You're kind of pulling for Vinny in in the movie. You know, he's like he's he is like the underdog because he's completely out of his element and he's he's not ready for it. But he's like, I'm 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 going to do this. I mean, the whole time, he, like very at the beginning, go through the tunnel. You're like, man, I like this guy. This is my kind of guy. He's funny. So the whole time, it's like, oh my god, he's so outmatched. <laughs> it's like, yeah. like, come on, dude, pull it together. Let's go. You know. Well, there's but also. You, you, oh, ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say you can see him. He's different at the end of the movie than he is at the beginning but you can see that there is a progression of his character which is is neat because a lot of times it's you know in a movie like this you can have characters not develop at all and it and you see him kind of overcome obstacles in the movie uh, well they do they do pretty well uh oh, you yeah. know, for most of the movie and and uh you know they they do uh they do i guess impress each other uh, in a way, and I think she's very impressive. Her character and what she does a couple times, and, and uh, how she carries herself. And yeah, I mean, there's, there was a scene that we left out where we come across a, an abandoned moonshine still in the in the woods, and she talks about how the Vinny character doesn't even drink, and she's you know, and I make fun of her for being a lush. And at the end of the movie, you know, I'm drinking beer that we found out of the water because my nerves are shot. So I mean, yeah. The, I loved that line, by the way. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> it's like I thought you don't drink. I, my nerves are shot. I <laughs> yeah. You know, so, you're talking about all the people that helped you uh, in, in your in your cast and crew. Give us a little bit. Of, talk to us a little bit about the cast and crew that put this together. Well, um, Big Luke is my tag team partner, and I mean he's he's a musician. He actually did a lot of. When you listen to the movie, all the acoustic guitar parts are, are him. Okay. Um, yeah. I did a couple of the bass licks that you hear because I'm a bass player. Um, uh, he is my tag team partner in pro wrestling. We've we've been through a lot of projects, Netflix TV shows, uh, wrestling with ghosts. He's my partner in, in that television show. Uh, we do a lot of comedy videos together. In fact, we have a new show coming out on the side TV later next year called Let's Have Sex with Big and Funky. Um, <laughs> Love which that. Is just, which is just a comedy show of a bunch of, like, it's, it's kind of like the vacant lot or almost live or Mr. Show of Bob and David or something like that. It's just one of those things. Um, and he's great at scripting and getting ideas. And he's, you know, we build him as the director, even though I kind of direct him too. But uh, he kind of has, he, this guy can, is so effing create, creative uh, that he has written. Uh, six movies since we started this one and each wow. one of them is better than the last and I'm just like I can't wait to start making these things and I love Luke he's uh, he's my he's he's me and him have been through a lot together uh, good and bad and uh, he's he's there and then Travis is his sidekick with the arrows and the axes um, he's a pro wrestler uh, and he's always been our protege he's 30 now but we've always kind of treated him like he was a kid you know like we we you know, we got him in the wrestling with ghost shows, and we taught him a lot about pro wrestling. Uh, and and he's the best actor of all of us, and he's a sweet kid, and we love him. And then Candy was a uh, was a chick, and she's the main female lead in the movie. Uh, awesome as hell, lead singer of her own music groups. Uh, she's a heavy metal singer. Uh, probably one of my closest friends now. After this movie, we our bond in this movie. Uh, I, I talk to her every day now. Uh, I, I, I absolutely love her. She's just a great person, and she's that's she's awesome. Some, she's somebody that that I can actually talk to on an intellectual level, and we kind of teach each other things. She's had a similar history to mine, but she's she is not only is she a pretty face, not only is she talented musically, she is very good. Her husband is very good with, uh, and he's the director, uh, co-director of photography, Justin, her husband, and they. They are very good with uh, lighting and, uh, you know, shooting at the golden hour and reflecting light to light up faces when there is no light. And, you know, they're, they're really good at, at that type of stuff together. And, and she came up with a lot of, you know, when you're making a movie, I was worried that we would make these movies and it would be like a bunch of uh, 
pro wrestling vignettes or something. Right. She came up with a lot of ideas to make it look more like a movie, uh, cinematography wise. So she's she's very valuable. And she's a writer too. And then less to a lesser extent, uh, Billy Marshall's the Forest Ranger. Um, I loved his character. I wish I played that role instead. <laughs> um, I, I love the alcoholic Forest Ranger. He's a, he. I met him actually. I was managing Billy Marshall the first time I met Perfect Hat in a wrestling event. Um, Billy's a, a old wrestler, a very cool guy. Scott Lane, which was the other, uh, he was kind of like the guy with the knife and the, the really effed up eyeball. Yeah. Uh, he uh, he's on The Walking Dead. He's a pro wrestler too. He was in Spider-Man: Homecoming uh, and a bunch of other stuff. He's been at, at like Stranger Things and The Outsider. And, uh, he's been in a whole bunch of stuff, and he's just a really great guy. Um, and then uh, let's see, going down the list, who else? God, there's so many people. There's uh, different musicians. You know, one of the things on a lot of these reviews, a lot of people were have complimented the soundtrack. They're like, for a low budget movie, the soundtrack of this movie is awesome. First, yeah, that was on my notes, man, because I, I that was that was kind of a neat mix of a, of different types of genre that kind of built the mood for the movie. All the all the artists are local, uh, except one guy that plays in Gatlinburg, but he's out of Toledo. Uh, but I consider kind of the Toledo, the South, where I'm from. But anyway, he, uh, you know, Spaceman Jones and the Motherships out of Asheville does the mushroom scene, and then Summoner Circle. Uh, if you see the uh, cult people doing the human sacrifice in the woods, that's actually their song uh, that's playing when that's happening. That's cool. Uh, when we're going through the penis tunnel, uh, Candy's band uh, is playing that song. Uh, it's oh, that's over. Awesome. And so there's Wally Miles from Maryville, who he's involved in wrestling too. He was uh, he, he was a soundtrack to one of the background stories. There was another group out of. Uh, October Frequency out of Georgia did one of the background songs. And then Fish Fisher out of Toledo did the last song called Zombie Love. Uh, and yeah, it was like swamp rock, hip hop, uh, 80s rock, hard rock, funk. Uh, there was a lot of different uh, heavy metal. There was a lot of different styles of music in this. Uh, oh, that's that's good, man. I, I the music was music in the scenery, man. I, I thought that that worked out really well with it and brought you, and brought a good uh, a good feel uh, uh, to it in, in a very uh, you know it, it haunting like oh it's pretty but wait a minute there's something well, yeah. something else for, in here. For me, I kind of got like that Evil Dead vibe out of it, where it was especially like when the evil shows up and. Ha- things that you did with the lighting and stuff and i thought that was really neat like where it's moving through uh the scene and yeah well that's definitely evil dead even though i probably didn't cognitively rip that off that's very now that i look back on it i was like yeah it's there the the camera well that's what i like i like yeah i like movies like that and and i thought well that's that's cool and and uh, yeah i mean just the flashbacks chad and i were talking about this earlier uh in, in pre-show uh the flashback scene at the beginning uh oh the rewind was, yeah, the rewind yeah, yeah that, was, that cool. was that was different that was neat uh so well thank you that was another thing too <laughs> when you're making a low budget movie you're trying to how can i make something stick out and so what you're talking about is that the beginning of the movie is actually played in reverse uh with another story playing in forward time uh, and that was something, and I appreciate you saying something about it, because a lot of people forget about that scene, because the movie goes into a comedy right after that. But it uh, that was something that, that was experimental, and man, I worked my ass off editing that, because it, it just didn't feel like right for weeks. And it finally, at the end, I was like, this is pretty tight. This is, this is pretty good. Well, I, I thought it was good. I don't think I've seen anything like that before. No, and, and it, well, it was, really? kind of, it was a hook for me. Thank you. And uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, I'm glad that uh, you picked up on that a lot of because I, I was afraid it would be too confusing and or whatever. But I kind of wanted to just be like, what in the hell? My my whole thing. We live in 2020 right now, right? Everybody looks at their phone. They could be you could be talking about, hey man, the Mandalorian's coming out. All right, let's all get around the TV like old times and watch the Mandalorian together. And you look around the room, everybody's looking at their phone. I'm right. Like, what? So I wanted I think a way that you combat that is you you don't have sound. So people have to watch. What is yeah. happening? 
you know, that, that was another idea that I had, and I hope it works out. Oh, it, 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 it did for me. I thought, like I said, I thought it was a good hook, and the whole time I'm like, okay, when is this going to happen? Or when did this happen? And, right. and I want to know how this is tying into these two and their, and their horrific hike they're going on here. How is this going to tie up? So I think that was a great, great, very foreboding type type deal with it, and I thought that was awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So we know Vin, Vinny's obviously a very talented guy. You know, he's making movies, wrestling, uh, musician, all that kind of good stuff, paranormal investigator. But is Vinny ready for the Nerdy Old Man Rapid Fire Question Session? Born I, for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Vinny, here we go. Wes, you can begin today, sir. Okay, Vinny, I, I, I gotta ask you, uh, this is a pretty standard question for me, but Marvel or DC? Marvel. Uh, yeah, I uh, my favorite hero is, is Power Man, and uh, I grew up as a city guy, right. and I always, you know, I'm a white guy, but I don't know, I've always liked black characters and stuff, so I always liked Iron Fist, Heroes for Hire, that type of stuff made more sense to me, like chasing an ambulance chaser. Uh, it made more sense to me than trying to save the world from uh, from aliens. I mean, it was something. That's, that's we, cool. Uh, We've yeah. not heard that before. I like that. That, that is a new character yeah. that's been brought up. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, Luke Cage. I guess people know him now as because Power Man's really a crappy name, really. But uh, uh, but, <laughs> but I also like um, I, uh, my wrestling character was based off Rocket Wrestler or excuse me Rocket Racer, who was a really bad Spider Man villain, and also. Um, you know, like all funk, you know, like George Clinton and a bunch of people like that, but also uh, Hypno Hustler, who was one of the worst uh, bad guys in history. Uh, you know, he had a group of girls named the Mercy Killers. They would sing and they would brainwash the audience, and he had smoke that would come out of his shoes. Why we, he would do that, I don't know, but it's like, yeah. it's just a terrible. He actually got killed in one of the later uh, Marvel movies. He turned good and he tried to hey, help a hero, and the bad guys were like, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, All right here, here's, here's another tough one. Star Wars or Star Trek? Uh, Star Wars. Yeah, it's uh, not very difficult. We know that. Uh, I just, it, uh, I, I like to, I may be in the minority, but I like the new trilogy. I don't know what everybody's problem is. We got all these people mouthing off about it. I'm like, and other people have the audacity to say the prequels are better. The prequels are unwatchable. I, I don't know. I mean, it's different. I'm I, I'm I'm with you. I, I didn't care for the prequels, but my brother loves the prequels. But they's the, he, he's from that era, so I, I get it. Dude, the the second movie is unwatchable. It looks like GameCube graphics. Right. It, it's terrible. <laughs> oh, I terrible. Love that. That's awesome. <laughs> GameCube. Okay, since your uh, your character had the Atari uh, T-shirt on, what is your favorite gaming system all time? Uh, it's the Atari seventy eight hundred. Yeah. Wow. In fact, I've got a. I've, I used to have the largest Atari seventy eight hundred website on the oh, planet wow. uh, that I make, and I'm actually resurrecting it. If you go to Atari seventy eight hundred forever, uh, I'm reamassing that. It's got a review of every game. Uh, you know, and there's a lot of content and stuff on there. So that's that's a pretty fun hobby for me. It's, it's, we'll have it's, to post a link to that when you yeah. when you get that up. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, that's since true. since you have created a horror and suspense. Uh, movie what is your favorite of that genre of all time other than the hike other than the hike oh and i'll go back and say i just got word today there's actually going to be somebody's going to be designing an atari 7800 game of the hike which is going to be That's a awesome. lot like uh adventure if you yes yes so, <laughs> That's but, awesome. um, a game i've not heard in a long time it's, wow. it's a great game the little, the little the little block that could <laughs> uh, the uh, my favorite horror suspense movie. Ah, that's tough. I I would have to say, man, there's a movie called Web Creek that's based in Australia. Okay. And using wrestling terms, I was a mark for that. Uh, <laughs> it got me every time. Like I, I fell for what it was going after, like a like a jabron every time. That's awesome. They pulled you in and took you for a ride, huh? Yeah, I kept thinking it would go this way, and I'd be like, I can't believe it, and they did the exact same thing a couple times, and I was like, I can't believe it. I keep thinking. And then, uh, I might have <laughs> been sleep deprived or something, and then, uh, probably a more famous one is The Audition, which is that Japanese movie. Okay. Um, have you guys ever heard of that no, one? No, I've, I've not. I've not heard no. of that one. 
Well, the audition is great. It starts off like a, uh, like the hype. It starts off as a comedy. There's this guy who's lost his wife. He loves his son, but he's absolutely miserable. And his best friend is this kind of slimy, but he's a good friend, though. But he's kind of this slime ball, almost like a Vinny character from the hype. He's smiling, laughing. He's like, hey, what are you doing there? You know, and he's trying to cheer his buddy up. And he says, let's do a movie and put it in the paper and get all these actresses to come down. And we'll, we'll audition all these girls. There won't be a movie. But we'll okay. just audition all these actresses, <laughs> and we'll see who you like, and then you can just start dating one of these actresses. And then he's like, well, what's going to happen when we don't go through the movie? And I'm like, this happens all the time. We'll just say we lost our funding and apologize. And then the girl that he falls in love with is a psychopath. It's one of the most unnerving. It, it starts off, it almost feels like a Drew Barrymore, Adam Sandler movie for about an hour. And then it, <laughs> and then it just and it escalates turns. into... One of the most horrific movies you'll ever see. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. All that's, right. That, and that's where we got the idea for the hike, that that could work. You could do comedy into horror, and, and it could work. And, and it's, it, it's, it's, it's a philosophy of let's make these guys likable so you're actually, you feel fear for the, the people that you're watching. All right. That's All cool. Right. Well, I got one more. Uh, and let's say the apocalypse has occurred. You can only have one weapon with you. What do you choose? Brass knuckles, man. There we go. go. Up close and personal. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta go go with with what I had in the hype. I like it. (laughs) Works out. The last one I've got for you, Vinny. uh, Does pineapple go on a pizza? Uh, I'm a Yankee, and normally I would throw somebody off of a window for you to suggest that. (laughs) But uh, I... uh, you know what, man? I, it, I'm a libertarian too, so whatever makes people happy. I've had, I've had, I've had Hawaiian pizza. Yeah, Hawaiian pizza with the ham on it's pretty. You know, it can yeah, be if it has it ham, is. yes, yes, yes. But it, that is but the it, correct answer. Yeah, but I, but I don't. Uh, I don't. I've never ordered it that way. Like if I was at a church or a party or something, and I had to eat it, that's that'd be all right. But I've never ordered that. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, Vinny, man, we really appreciate you being on here and talking about your. Uh, your film and why don't you give us a little bit of um uh, uh, of places people can go and check it all out and uh, get more information about it sure um there's a facebook page called the hike and there's a very beautiful woman in my ugly face looking at polaroids it's kind of blue and green you'll know that you'll see it uh the woods are kind of blue and green and then um the traditional website is the hike 2020.com we have a lot of reviews. Thank you guys for letting us, uh, you know, review the movie and, and, and interviewing us and get the publicity out there because we are, we have offers for distributors, uh, but we're trying to get the best one and uh, we should have some news this week. But the more pub, there's tons of news articles and reviews and stuff on, and a little, uh, we're going to put little, like little Easter eggs and stuff because there's a lot to this movie that a lot of people probably don't catch on the first run through that uh that are like little easter eggs and stuff that we think are interesting at least so that oh, that's great that. everybody check out those websites and what's what's next for Vinny? well we uh just had a production meeting this this week i used to be a southern gospel dj and the only reason i can't no offense to anybody i don't like southern gospel music the only reason i was doing it was because that was the only job that would hire me in radio i right. couldn't get on the rock and roll stations and nothing without a degree in that stuff so um, we're doing a movie that is going to be a, a comedy horror based in a Southern Gospel radio station. Um, <laughs> you have me right yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, I'm in already. Go ahead. I'm yeah. in. <laughs> Everybody, Candy and Travis out of the team already says they think this movie is going to be ten times better than The Hype based on the meeting we had the other day. Um, it's basically going to be this guy, and, and I'm playing the lead in this again just because uh, of expense and speed that we got to get this done in. But um, I'm playing the DJ, and it's all these stories that happened to me while I was at the station, and there's some crazy... I tried to kill my station manager, and that's going to be in the... I mean, it, oh, legitimately in real life. Uh, you know, so I hated her. At a her. Southern Gospel radio station. Yeah. This she is beautiful. Hated me. She hated me. I hated her. But eventually what's going to happen is during the night, um, the rapture happens. Oh, and, man. And so this guy is stuck at a radio station while he's watching the world burn around him and he's got it all these people keep calling into the station 
with all of these worries and he's got to sit there and figure out how do I help all the people? How do I help myself? What do I do? And then things start going around the build, the building that he's got to take care of. So it's going to be a kind of a horror, supernatural, quasi-religious, uh, be big and funky productions version of dogma in a way that's got a, like, you know, a, a positive message, message about uh, spirituality, but yet there's going to be uh, making fun of it too at the same time. Oh, that's great. So we're, we're, I'm excited to hear about that. And when that comes through, because I know it's going to work out and be successful for you, you're going to have to come back on here, man. And yeah, we'll it's, get, called we'll get, a, yeah. it's called, I'll just, I'm sorry to cut you off. It's no. WJHCFM. W, w, oh, <laughs> I get it now. Okay. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. I, I love that, man. Yeah. No, that's good stuff, Vinny. Thanks, man, for coming on with us. And we'll get you back on and maybe talk about uh, Wrestling with Ghosts and the new film when you get that going, too. Hey, baby, I appreciate it. And thank yeah, you guys so yeah. much. And-, and guys, you know, make sure you stay tuned to the uh, show. Uh, Nerdy Old Men podcast fans, uh, we're reaching out there and, and, and getting some good artists like Vinny on here. If, uh, if you've got a project and you've got a, uh, something that you'd like to... Uh, contribute and, and to be featured give us a yell you know reach out to us on our social media and and uh all of that and, and we'll get you on here uh wes what you got buddy well uh this this was something I, I just wanted to give a little shout out to uh all of all the fans in lake stevens washington uh i i, I don't know who you are how you found us but thank you you listen a uh, lot they they do uh and and we've got a lot of fans in dublin ireland so I, I well, don't know, Chad. That might be your Notre Dame connection. It, I don't it, it, know. It could be. It could be. <laughs> but thank you for listening to the show. We appreciate it. So. <laughs> Isn't that the weirdest thing? That's the coolest thing about the internet. You know, the one thing, I don't want to bore you, and you cut this off. You don't even have to have this on the show. But one thing I think is interesting is being a musician, mixolydian and music is uh, what they use in Celtic music. We also, all of the bluegrass and Appalachian music, like Southern rock, use mixolydian and mode. And there's some sort of weird connection between Ireland and Appalachian United States. Well, not, I, only, not only I know how that, it looks, but music. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, I know that uh, I, I've got a degree in history and, and knowing that a lot of the Scotch-Irish moved into the East Tennessee, you know, the Appalachian area uh, because it resembled where yeah. they had came from. And there were pockets of... Uh, the Appalachians, where the language was so unique, and the only other places that it existed were over in Scotland and Ireland, in certain places, and it's where they had immigrated into the United States, and it well, was so actually, isolated. It just yeah, we, stayed. The guys, the people down here, speak like what they used to over there. Yeah. All of this new stuff that you hear, I've heard. I don't know how true this is, but. The uh, English people started speaking with all this pomp in their voice and all this proper stuff to piss us off. But they actually used to talk like people in Appalachian, uh, the Appalachians in the United States. That this whole like, oh, I'm going to have tea with my crumpets because we were so <laughs> rustic and kind of like, you know, there were savages and, you know, it was just like everybody was dying of dysentery. And, you know, we were just this up and coming country that kind of was. So they just kind of started talking uh, headier. Uh, to us to kind of try to intimidate us or put us in our place but they actually all of these dialects around these mountains sounds what or sounded like what the english used to sound like Mm -hmm. that's interesting yeah fun little uh, facts on the nerdy old men podcast (laughs) (laughs) so everybody make sure you check out all the links there for uh, Vinny's movie the hike and as we've learned and you will learn from the hike when you watch that wicked cool uh spooky movie don't go into the woods without your brass knuckles. And if you find any Polaroids laying on the ground, leave them alone. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeehaw.